with this shit like I'm Dennis. I started this I'm a business. Be hate, trying to blemish my image. He want the smoke, two to three count with the scope. And still they clip long as a rope. We rob his nose, shit like he had him a cold. I knew the boy was a h pull up with the gang. You know that we buying it. What is your shit? What is you claiming? I am a B. Today episode is sponsored by You know who? Sight now. Today's video is sponsored by Cloud Bucks, man. Cloud Bucks, man, you get $2 for clicking on the link. You're $10 when you refer somebody. You're $25 just for signing up, man. That's just for signing up. As soon as you sign up, like as soon as you click the link at the bottom of this video in the description, you're going to get $25. It's that simple. Hey, I ain't going to waste y'all time. I ain't, I ain't bluffing. I ain't about wasting nobody time, nobody money. That's not me. I'm going to keep it short and sweet, man. Job in like three months. Three months, bro. I just been sitting at home rocking up cash, bro. I, I, I'm not playing with you, bro. Like, I made my first day, I made like 300 400 dollars, bro. I can't even remember it was so long ago. You got Instagram, whatever, social media, anything. You can post it on there. Anybody that clicks your link, that just just clicks, the, just clicks it, bro. You you getting two dollars, bro? It's that simple. On top of that, if you make a YouTube video. You get fifty dollars. You know what I'm saying? Simple. Just tell them about what it is, how it is. Like I'm telling y'all right now, it's, that's that's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you can you can cash out easy. You can you can they 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 take PayPal. They take Cash App. They take uh, Bitcoin. Or they can mail you a check, man. E e any one of them, and you good to go, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's not a bluff, man. A hey, back to the video, though. Anthony Joshua versus Andy Ruiz Jr. Now, what really happened in this fight? Bit of a shocker. One of the biggest upsets in recent times. Where some odds had Joshua as big as a 25 to 1 favorite. And the fight showed those odds makers were really wrong about this one. Now, Anthony Joshua is, of course, the bigger fighter, the longer, taller fighter, and Andrew Ruiz has a very short reach for a heavyweight. Ruiz really was trying to find his distance in with his jabs, wasn't only getting anywhere with that, so what he resorted to doing was waiting for Joshua to come in and create openings for himself. So Ruiz kind of held a tight guard, hands up at all times, walking Joshua down, and Joshua had to break the pressure sometimes, and resorted to coming in behind jabs and stuff like that. And through that, Ruiz started to let the hounds go, start to blast right through Anthony Joshua, and she Show some incredible hand speed in the pocket, right? That's where Ruiz is going to want the fight. He wants to fight in the pocket and let off the combination and relentlessness and hunt down Anthony Joshua in case he tries to get away, which is something he tried to do later in the fight. But at the third round, where everything started to get a little bit crazy, was actually Anthony Joshua getting the better in the pocket of Andy Ruiz, which complements Anthony Joshua's skill. His boxing technique. For a longer fighter to get in the pocket with such a dangerous boxer with fast hands and a short reach and get the better of him, that just shows high level boxing for that fighter. So Ruiz is pushing Joshua back and Joshua tries to break the pressure. He moves forward, throws a big jab and locks himself plants for the big right hand. Ruiz does a very good job of parrying the jab with his right hand as well as pulling back. He starts leaning away, feels the big punch coming. Joshua comes straight through with a big straight right. And Ruiz is able to get on the outside of the punch when he pulls away. And he does have an opening on that side, so he goes for a very short left hook over the top. But Joshua does a very good job of not lowering his right hand when he throws it. He puts it right back in position, guards the hook very well. And right when that happens, he puts his left hand up, and Ruiz is going for the right hand. Now, the thing about Andy Ruiz Jr. is he always goes left, right, left, right. He doesn't really double up on punches. So if he's going to throw that left hand, the right hand's going to come. After the right hand, it's going to be the left hand that's going to come. And Joshua had this down for a bit. So he puts his left hand up, blocks that other right hook, and he's peekabooing his way in, marching his way in through the guard. He blocks the hooks and then stuffs them in as he gets in very close. Notice Andy Ruiz's hands where they are at. Anthony Joshua sees the right hand is down, so he goes for a big left hook over that side. It's a little bit too short of range to really connect cleanly with it, so Ruiz's body moves with the punch. Joshua falls up with a big right uppercut, which actually just grazes the chin of Ruiz, but lifts it up for another opening. And Joshua's going to go for the big left hook, as is Andy Ruiz. But the thing why Joshua's gotten closer is because he didn't wind it all the way back like Ruiz did. Ruiz dropped and winded up his left hand a bit too much, whereas Joshua kept it in the pocket and in tight. The left hook technique, the form and the punch, went to Anthony Joshua in this one. Also, Ruiz did get connected by the punch, so it threw off a little bit of his instincts there. But knowing the toughness of Ruiz, of course he's going to get up and of course he's going to march down Joshua again. 
As the battle commences, Ruiz gets right into Anthony Joshua's face. Joshua pumps out a bit of jabs as a range finder, throws out the jab as he masks in his left step for a big right hand again. Connects clean on Andy Ruiz. As Ruiz was going for a check left hook, which actually grazes the top of the head of Anthony Joshua. This creates a bit of confidence for Andy Ruiz, so he starts going forward again. Joshua has the better technique in his hooks. Look at the difference here as well. Joshua's hooks are in tight. He gets on the inside of Ruiz's hooks, but just misses. I mean, Ruiz's hands all the way down there. It has more power, but it also comes with a telegraph. And he goes to tries to connect over the top on Joshua, but the arm fits in, blocks the punch from getting in. And Ruiz bumps right to Joshua, forcing him to move back a bit. Joshua having the reach advantage, he's going to need a little bit more distance to feel a little bit more comfortable. And as he hops his way back, Ruiz falls up with another left hand. So remember, left, right, left. Those are the combinations that he always throws. And when he throws the left hook, Joshua does not see it coming. He tried to hop back away to find range, which rattles him badly. And knowing the fight that Joshua went through with Klitschko, whenever he gets hurt or whenever things get a little bit chaotic, he will throw back at times, right? He has that fight in him, and he starts throwing back at Andy Ruiz in the pocket because Ruiz, again, he's going to hunt down Joshua. He's not going to let him get away. He's sticking on Joshua and keeping his own range. So Joshua goes and fires back. He throws the left hand, throws a right uppercut, which Ruiz is able to move back just a little bit. And as Joshua's coming with that tight hook, I mean, I absolutely love the hooks that Joshua throws. The form is absolutely perfect. Ruiz is able to duck under the punch, bob and weave, and find a great angle on Joshua, who is completely overextended to his right side. So they create a little bit more distance, and Ruiz is watching Joshua. Right, Joshua went for one attack to really initiate action. He went for the one-two, a long one-two, and he does it again. Ruiz is onto it now, showing a bit of fight IQ out there. So Joshua does the same setup, throws the big jab, steps off big to his left, and comes in for the big right straight again. Ruiz is able to pull on the punch, making the extension of the right straight to extend fully. And now he found his counter shot again. I mean, look how much forward Joshua is leaning into his right straight. And Ruiz finds a big left hook that connects clean on Anthony Joshua. Joshua's going to fall up with the big left hook again. He's doing the same punches here. He's throwing the same stuff. One, two, and tries to retract back with that left hook, which is actually an amazing combination. But when you keep going to the same thing, it gets repetitive for your opponent. And Ruiz, instead of going for a big right hook like he did before, he goes for a right straight, which gets on the inside of the looping punch, right? Straights most of the time beat looping punches. Even if it's tight, it's still a hook. It's still going to be looping. He just misses Anthony Joshua, but more importantly, Joshua's left hook gets stuck in. Right, gets blocked by the right arm of Ruiz. Joshua goes and throws a big right shovel hook. And right before Joshua throws it, Ruiz is onto the instincts, right? So he's able to duck under it right before the punch even gets... Telegraph. The extension on the right hand completely opened up Anthony Joshua's right side. Completely. He doesn't have enough time to retract the punch or get in stance or anything. His chin is open. Too much commitment, too much fight, and not enough correct decision making in the pocket for Anthony Joshua compared to Andy Ruiz. So Ruiz outsmarted Joshua here a bit, and he connected with a big left hook over the top. As Joshua was going for another left hook himself, he's fighting too much. Joshua's fighting too much. Instead of making the right decisions and showing the better fight IQ, Ruiz showed his toughness, his power, his hand speed, but more importantly, he showed to have the intelligence in this fight. He connects right on the ear of Joshua. Joshua's had whiplashes into the punch because of his own left hook he was committing with and created a lot more impact. It was double the damage that Andy Ruiz was able to deliver here. And from this, Joshua is just out of it. And Ruiz was able to put on a bit of a flurry, but then stops a little bit and finds his target. Throws a slapping right overhand right behind the ear of Joshua, which drops him. And from this, Joshua didn't really recover. And you have to give credit to Andy Ruiz's power because of that and also his, his precision. I mean, Klitschko also rocked. Anthony Joshua, who is known as a big puncher himself when he commits. And Joshua's able to recover from that one. Third round in, the first time he gets dropped in this fight, he couldn't recover. So when it comes from a distance, Ruiz created some distance himself away from Joshua. Looks for openings. Joshua's hands are down now. Right, He's a bit rocked. He's a bit discombobulated out there. And Ruiz sees the right hand of Joshua down. So he goes for a lunging left hook. 
and follows up with the right straight. When the right straight is coming, Joshua puts his left hand up to his side as well, think it was going to be a right overhand or something like that, which is a punch. A lot of shorter fighters commit on a lot of taller fighters, but Ruiz came down the center and connected right through the opening of the gloves and rocked Joshua again. And from this, Joshua was just in the corner defenseless. He was leaning on the ropes. He needed the ropes to help him stand up. Pretty much target practicing with Joshua's head at this point. So then we go to the seventh round, and Joshua gets his wits about him just enough. He's still a little a bit out of it it seemed like a little bit flat he started breathing heavy in the fight so he moves forward tries to parry the left hand of andy ruiz with his own right hand and moves to his left to commit with a left hook but ruiz evades the parry by winding back his own left hook and they're going for it at the same time but who's gonna win this one it's gonna be anthony joshua because he's also moving to his left He's moving with the punch of Ruiz, whereas Ruiz is standing in position the entire time. They both connect at the same time because even though Joshua does have a faster left hook, he went for the parry first as Ruiz was setting up for his own left hook at the same time. Right, so Joshua went for parry, left hook, and met at the same time Ruiz just winded back his left hook. But man, does Andy Ruiz Jr. have an insane chin. He took this punch like a champion, like the champion he became, and came right at Joshua right afterward. I mean, he got dropped by this before, took this one way better. It was flush. So Joshua goes for another tight left hook. Then Ruiz now is going to counter that with a big right overhand. Now Ruiz is going to win this exchange because he's moving his head with the left hook. When you're throwing a big right overhand, you're both in the same stance, both orthodox. When you're committing on a big right overhand, your head is moving to your left. It's going to move with that left hook. Even if it connects on you, the impact is going to be decreased. And when a taller fighter is throwing punches at a shorter fighter, besides maybe an uppercut, when he's throwing a left hook in this case, his shoulder is automatically going to be a bit too low, right? He has to punch down, right? If you're punching up, it's, you could do this at home watching this right now. When you punch up, your shoulder covers your chin a lot better. When you're punching down, your shoulder is not able to really cover your chin. And they have a four-inch height gap here with a bigger reach differential. And because of this, there is nothing guarding, nothing protecting Anthony Joshua from stopping this overhand right. Overhand right goes right over the top. No defense at all. Bombs. Anthony Joshua on the jaw. Joshua is rattled. He has his head lowered. It's instincts here at this point. He's trying to evade punches by just lowering his head. And again, Andrew Ruiz starts blasting Anthony Joshua. He lands a big right hand behind the ear as well. Throws hooks, which Joshua has his hands on his side instinctively. It's just something you could tell he practices a lot whenever punches get thrown at him. He likes to keep his hands up. Doesn't really parry shots too much on the defense. And Ruiz found the opening down the center. Starts throwing straight shots this time and rocks joshua even more he pulls down the head of joshua just a little bit but here's the thing joshua's already on rubbery legs on chicken legs at this point if it's enough to just nudge your head down a little bit to cause the fall my man is pretty much out of it so we move it to the end of the fight joshua goes and throws a big left hook and ruiz again was able to pull in the punch just enough to get his counter shot in on the much longer fighter here remember what i said in the beginning this is what andy ruiz is doing here he's hunting down joshua he's getting joshua to commit on him and he's going to hunt him down and not let him get away until he drops him. So Joshua's hook completely overextends. He drops it and gives the big opening on his jaw again. Ruiz is moving in. Throws a big left hook to the forehead of Joshua. Joshua's trying to put his left hand up just in time because he knows the right hand is coming right afterward. Not able to get it there fast enough and gets connected by a big right overhand behind the ear again. And this pretty much ends the fight right there and then. Now some people are going to say the stoppage was controversial. I agree a little bit, but you can see Joshua was a little bit out of it. I mean, he was answering the ref. He was answering kind of quietly. But as the ref signaled to start the fight for Joshua, Joshua didn't move forward or anything. Kind of just sat in the corner now if i'm gonna be honest i don't know the rules of how the ref can stop a fight like this do they have to be off the corner or can they actually sit in the corner and then when the fight goes on then they move forward after they see their opponent coming at them that's really what it all comes down to in my opinion unless he sees that joshua is really out of it because nobody can really notice how out of it joshua is right now other than the ref looking into his eyes so at the end of the day i still think Andy ruiz would have knocked out joshua i think this stoppage potentially stopped any further brain damage or any kind of damage that Andrew Ruiz is going to cause to Joshua further. Because Joshua did not have the balance. He did not have the wits about him to continue the fight effectively. And Ruiz has a granite chin, heart of a warrior, power and speed in his hands, and showed higher fight IQ out there. It was really hard to see Joshua really do anything at this point. I hear they're going to do a rematch. 
I'm very excited to see a rematch. And the heavyweight division is just getting better and better and better. They say the three heavyweights, the three heads of the heavyweight division, Joshua, Wilder, and Fury. No, you can make your choice. Are there four heads now? Because Andy Ruiz is up there and he's going to rematch Joshua. So right now you can say there's four heads of the heavyweight division until that rematch ends and then maybe one of them gets cut off. But it doesn't matter. We're getting more talent. People are saying this ruined the heavyweight division, but how? We have more talent, more elite fighters in the division now. And people are going to say Andy Ruiz is not a draw. How do you know he's not going to be a draw? He's the first Mexican heavyweight champion ever. Of course they're going to get behind him. And he has an exciting style. And he just beat Anthony Joshua, who's one of the biggest stars in boxing today. So I'm a bit optimistic for the future of Andy Ruiz as well as the heavyweight division. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoyed my content, make sure to subscribe. My next video is going to be the breakdown of the MMA fight with Alexander Gustafsson versus Anthony Smith, which is a Fucked up, man. I think, I think, I think Joshua. I think he took him lightly, man. I, ain't, I'm not hating on uh, Ruiz or whatever. That dude, he, that Bama can box, man. He alright, bro, for real. But I think Joshua took him too lightly. I don't think he took him as a real challenge, to be honest with you, bro. You know what I'm saying? I can say whatever y'all want, but that's just how I feel. I think the next fight gonna be a little bit more interesting. I ain't gonna say who win, but I'm just saying, man, it's, it's gonna be better than the first one. You know what I mean? I ain't biased or nothing, but I just feel like he, he ain't really take him seriously. I think he really wanted to fight Wilder instead, but I mean, I don't know, man. Y'all let me know in the comments, man. You know what I'm saying? Let me know in the comments. Blue face, baby.